law of sines. Notice the difference between these two triangles. The one on the left is going to be pretty easy for you to find C. You've done it a million times. You would have used the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. No problem. You can do that and find that hypotenuse right there. But what happens when it's not a right angle? You can't use the Pythagorean theorem. And that's where the law of sines is going to come in. Law of sines looks something like this. And so you can see the formula is going to look a little bit more complicated. Once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad, but it's definitely different than the Pythagorean theorem. You can't use the Pythagorean theorem if you don't have a right triangle. So make sure you get that straight. It's going to be important for you to remember some things that you might have learned in geometry class. How to prove triangles congruent by angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 side. All of that should come back to you. You should remember that. As well as the bad case. All right. There was one problem in geometry that your teacher said you cannot do, you cannot prove triangles congruent. And they might have spelled it backwards and said, just remember it's a bad word. Um, we're going to be able to do that this time. We're not proving triangles congruent. We're trying to do something else. But, but the bad one is just going to be a little bit harder to deal with. So it's going to be really important that you can distinguish between angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, side, angle, side, angle, because it's going to tell you which formula to use. Law of sines, I already showed you the formula for. Law of cosines will come a little bit later. So a few years back, there was a uh, app. It's called Temple Run. It was a very popular game. And, and this guy was running through this temple, through this jungle. And the object of the game was for this guy to collect all these coins. Maybe you've played it. Maybe you remember it. It was called Temple Run. I want you to think about that concept as you try to identify what type of problem you're looking at. You're going to see a triangle, and it's going to have some different things marked or some different pieces of information given. And I want you to imagine that you're this runner running around the triangle. So remember, the object of the game is to collect these tokens. All right, so if you, can, if you can visualize that, you can see that this is an angle, and this is a side, and this is an angle, and so hopefully you can recognize that this problem is going to be an angle side angle problem. That's going to tell you how to proceed, which formula to use, what to do, and that kind of thing. Now you got to pay attention, and um, you don't want to go the wrong way. If I started here at an angle, and then run, 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 run. I don't want to go that way. I don't want to go that way because I'm going too long without picking up one of my tokens, one of my coins. And so sometimes people that don't quite understand will say, well, here's an angle, and then here's an angle and a side. They'll get the wrong case, all right? So keep in mind, you're trying to grab these things as quickly as possible. So angle, side, angle. Here's another example. I see an angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. So this is an AAS problem. Angle, angle, side. Here's another one where I would go, this is a side B, angle C, side A. This looks like side, angle, side. Here's one, and it doesn't really matter where you start as long as you pick them up quickly. So if I start here, that's angle, side, side. Ooh, that's the bad one, right? Okay, you're not supposed to say the bad word, but I think it's easier to remember that that's the hard one. That's the, that's the bad one. It's not that we can't do the problem. It's just going to be more complicated. Or if you go around this way, side, side, angle. Some teachers are going to force you to write that um, because it's not a bad word, but it's the same thing. Whether you do angle, side, side, or side, side, angle, it's the same thing. It's going to be that case too, which is called the ambiguous case. It's the hard one. There's extra things you have to think about. So forget about tokens for a second. You're going to see numbers. You're going to see angles and sides, but it's just the same thing. Angle, side, angle.
and this one would be that's a side angle side. Okay, so the last thing I want to do here is I want to demonstrate why SSA is bad. It's called the ambiguous case. Okay, ambiguous means unclear. So if you have those three pieces of information, a side, side, and an angle, it might be unclear if you have a triangle at all. And so here you can see I've, I've drawn a triangle and I tried to mark in red the pieces that were given. So let's say we know this angle A and we know this side B and this side A of a triangle. Here's why this is ambiguous. If I have an angle here and a side here and a side here, notice what happens if I rotate this around. I've got the same three pieces of information, an angle A, a side B, and a side A. I've still got those same three pieces of information, but I've got a completely different triangle. So that's why this is ambiguous. It's unclear whether we have this triangle or this triangle or sometimes it might not even form a triangle at all. So you've got to be really careful with the ambiguous case and look for that. Good luck. Example one, solve triangle ABC. So they, they give you some different pieces of information. I like to draw a picture of it. Okay, if they're describing a triangle, I like to draw a picture of a triangle. Okay, so I'll just kind of draw a triangle and, and pretty much I would try to draw the same thing every time, but you got you got A, B, and C. I would not draw a right triangle just to show that this is not uh, a right triangle. But they told me A was 32 degrees, angle C is 81.8 degrees, and side A is 42.9 centimeters. So you have to understand that side A is across from angle A, so don't mess that up, okay? Make sure you put capital letters representing your angles and uh, lowercase letters are representing your sides. So we know, we know we are solving the triangle and solving the triangle means find all the missing pieces. So they've given me some pieces, I've got to find the rest of the pieces. Generally, what happens is whatever they give you two of, it's easiest to find the third. So see how they've given me, uh, they've given me two angles. Usually that means it's going to be easy to find the third angle, okay? So, um, you know, how do we find that third angle B right there? Well, subtract from 180, right? 32 plus 81.8 plus angle B equals 180. We know the three angles in a triangle add up to 180, and so we use that concept. So, subtract from 180, angle B is... 66.2 degrees. Oh, I'm still okay. I might have skipped a step. Um, you know, it, before you even start solving, it's important for you to figure out which case it is. And you might notice there's an angle, there's an angle, and there's a side. So to me, this problem looks like angle, angle, side, or like they said, side, angle, angle, if you go on back. But that's how I know this is going to be case one. This is going to be case one. Law of science. We probably should start with that on one of these problems. Anyway, I've got that first angle. That was pretty easy. Coming up with the other two sides, though, is where I'm going to have to use that law of science. So I would want to use these two. And then let's say I want to find side C, I would use that 81.8. Okay, so let's find side C first. You have little c over sine 81.8 degrees equals, and we use the side for A, side A was 42.9 centimeters over sine. 32 degrees. And then we're gonna we're gonna cross multiply or multiply up. I, I like to just think about multiplying here, but mathematically what we're doing is taking uh, sine 81.8 times both sides. So 
So on the calculator, make sure you're in degrees. You're going to do, you're going to have C equals 42.9 sine 81.8 degrees over sine 30. Round that off to 80.1 centimeters. Little c equals 80.1 centimeters. Okay? And so we've got side c. The only thing missing now, I guess, is side b right here. And so to get side b, we have little b over sine 66.2 equals, and you could either use your um, pair of A numbers or your pair of C numbers, it doesn't really matter. I like using the ones that were given to me in the problem just because I know they're right. If I had used, if I used the, the other ones with the C number I just found, if I had messed up this C number, then the, anything I use that for is going to be messed up as well. So I'm going to use 42.9 and sine 32. And so to find B, I'm just going to, you know, multiply both sides by six, sine 66.2. And B is going to equal 42.9 times sine 66.2 divided by sine 32, 74.1. And so solving the triangle means finding the missing parts. I had to find those three missing parts. It might be nice if you rewrote the answer where you wrote them all together like this. But as long as your answer is clearly marked, I, I don't know that you need to do that. Just make sure that it's, it's clearly uh, your answer is, is clear and easy to find. Example 2. Jerry wishes to measure the distance across the Big Muddy Road. He determines that angle C is 112.90 degrees, angle A is 31.10 degrees, and side B is 347.6. Find the distance across the river. Okay. So what you might do is, is draw out the triangle. They've already drawn it for you. But in your diagram, you might notice that we have an angle and a side and an angle. We've got angle, side, angle. And so angle, side, angle would tell me that this is case one, and we know we're using the law of sines. Okay? So that's a big deal. Case one we know we're going to be using the law of sines. Find the distance across the river. So the distance across the river is this distance right here, A. So normally what I'll do is I'll, so I'll start with what I'm trying to find. A over sine A equals, since we have B, we do B over sine B. Little B over sine B. Okay. Maybe you don't need to write that. Maybe you skip that step and go A over sine, and we know angle A is 31.10. That's going to equal, little b is 347.6 feet over sine of angle B. Angle B, we don't have angle B yet, do we? Angle B is over here. Okay, but it's pretty easy to find angle B because we already know two of the angles and we know the angles should add up to 180. So we've got 31.1 plus 112.9 plus whatever angle B is equals 180. So you should be able to add those and subtract from 180. B is going to equal 36. This angle right here is 36. And so there was an intermediate step that we had to figure out. That's pretty easy to figure that out. 
Um, angle B is, is 36 degrees there. So there's our law of sines, okay? The law of sines. And so then to solve this, you would cross multiply. Okay? You want to isolate the variable. And so maybe you think of cross multiplying. Maybe it's maybe it's easier just to think about multiplying both sides by sine 31.1 degrees. Okay. 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 And so A is going to equal whatever that turns out to be. So let's pull out a calculator and let's just check it out. Okay, make sure you're in degrees here. So we have 347.6 times sine 31.1 divided by sine 36. Okay, 305.5 feet. 305.5 feet. You might notice this problem has four significant figures, and so that's why I rounded off to um, four sig figs. You could, I guess you could round off to 0.46 if you didn't care about sig figs, but we got the distance across that river is 305.5 feet. Thank you. Example four, we're solving a triangle. And so remember, when we're solving a triangle, we're trying to find the missing bits. The first thing that I would do is try to draw it. And I make kind of a rough sketch of a triangle, and I don't really know what's going to happen at this point, but, but I just kind of sketch it out to see what I'm looking at. This gives me angle B is 55 degrees and 40 minutes, 55.6 repeating degrees. Remember, 40 minutes over 60 minutes is going to give me that 0 0.6. I, I, think, I think we would be better in, in decimal degrees than minutes, so we, we would want to convert that. Side B is across from angle B, that's 8.94 meters, and then side A is across from angle A, 25.1 meters. Okay. Remember when we talked about Temple Run yeah. and the guy running around the triangle or whatever? I see an angle and a side and a side. Okay. I see angle side side. That's the bad one, right? And that's going to indicate that this is case two of law of sines. Case two of law of sines. So I'm using the law of sines formula, but this is case two. This is the ambiguous case. And so the fact that it's the ambiguous case, or case two, tells me that this might not be possibly a triangle. Maybe this doesn't actually form a triangle. Or it might form a triangle, or I could maybe form two triangles. And, and so that's why it's ambiguous at this case. It's unclear whether I've got a good triangle drawn or not. So we're going to use law of sines, and we're going to notice the connection between a side and an angle. It's apparent that we would find angle A first. Looking at the information that I have given, since I've got this side A would match up with angle A, I'm going to put those two together. Okay? Now, don't write this down. We know that the law of sines from yesterday says something like this. But since I'm going to be solving for this angle, I don't want my variable to be on the bottom. It's, it adds a step to my solving process. What I'm going to do is just completely flip the equation upside down. And I'm allowed to do that. And so I would put this equation, just, just write it upside down because I want the variable that I solve for to be on the top. Trust me, it's going to save you a little bit of work. It's going to be a little bit easier to deal with. Okay, so let's, let's look at this form of law of sine. It's just upside down. That's all it is. So let's fill in for what we've got. My missing variable is A, so we'll have sine of angle A over side A, 25.1, equals sine B, so that's sine 55.6 repeating degrees, over side B is 8.94. So there's my proportion. You can think about it as cross multiplying if you want, or you can think about multiplying both sides by 25.1 if you want. I kind of think about it as, as just multiply this up. But sine A is going to equal whatever we get when we multiply this up. So you need a calculator for this. 
and we're going to do 25.1 times sine 55.6 repeating divided by 8.98. To get about 2.318. So sine A equals 2.318437872. I don't really want to round off until the end of the problem. But I keep going. If I'm going to isolate the variable here, I have to do an inverse sine of both sides. And so we're doing an inverse sine of that number. I'm going to hit the answer button on my calculator so I, I don't have to round off or type in all those things. We see we get a domain error. Of course we get a domain error. This number, this number right here has to be in between negative 1 and 1. We, we get an error, which would indicate that no such triangle exists. No such triangle exists. If you get that same kind of error, it's telling you that there is no triangle. Example 5, solve this triangle. I would start by drawing a picture, or at least trying to. Hopefully it exists, we'll see. Uh, angle A is 55.3 degrees. Side A is 22.8 feet. And side B is 24.9 feet. Okay? So you look at the, uh, you know, you look at what you have. You have an angle and a side and a side. ASS. Okay? Angle side side is telling me it's case two. And it's going to be the ambiguous case. The ambiguous case of law of signs. So I'm, I'm using, I'm definitely using law of signs, but it's the ambiguous case. And so at this point, I don't know if this triangle is actually possible. Maybe it's not possible. Maybe there's one triangle that's possible, or maybe there's two triangles that's possible. Okay. And you, can, I mean, you can tell there's going to be two triangles from the directions there, but, but uh, really, normally we wouldn't know. So what we do with law of signs is we, we find partnerships between an angle and a side. And so we see these two partnerships. Looks like I should be able to find angle B, so let's start with angle B. I'm going to write the law of sines upside down so I can have my variable on the top. Okay, sine B over its partner, the side B, 24.9, equal to sine of angle A, 55.3 degrees, over its partner, 22.8 feet. Okay? And so in order to, to isolate B, I'm going to multiply both sides by 24.9. And so on the calculator, I would do 24.9 times sine 55.3 divided by 22.8. We have 0.8978 or so. So sine B is about equal to 0.8978, but I'm just going to leave that number in the calculator. I don't want to round off in the middle of my problem. I'll leave that number in my calculator. I need to do an inverse sign in order to isolate the B. So we do an inverse sign of that number in the calculator. 63.9. Let's, let's round off to the tenth. Let's call it 63.9. And be very careful. That's not your answer for angle B. That's the reference. Okay? That's 63.9 where angle B or where sine, I'm sorry, where sine is positive. And so you have to go back and do this thing where it's like, okay, sine is positive in the first and second quadrant. And so there might be a 63.9 in the first, or, you know, whatever this is. You'd have 180 minus, 180 minus 63.9. Oops. Nice. 116.1. We've got two different possible answers for B. B equals 63.9 degrees, or B equals 116.1 degrees. We've got two different possibilities. And that's why there's going to end up being two different triangles, is because B might be 63.9, or B might be 116.1. We'll just have to see. Okay? 
So um, what we kind of have to do is do two different problems, okay? If, if B was 63.9, we could find angle C pretty easily. So we've got angle A, and now we've got angle B. So angle C is just going to be 180 minus those two things. <coughs> One eighty minus fifty five point three minus sixty three point nine sixty point eight. Okay, C is going to equal sixty point eight degrees. Okay. Um, likewise, over here you can do the same thing. C is going to equal one eighty minus the the A value was fifty five point three. But this B value was 116.1. And so subtract this off. 180 minus 55.3 minus 116.1. So 8.6 basically. Looks like C is 8.6 over here. And right here is, is where I can tell that there are going to be two triangles. Okay? Both of those things work. I've got, I've got all three angles for, for two different triangles, and so I know that works. The only thing I haven't found yet, I just found angle uh, C, found twice, basically. Uh, I've got angle B. The only thing I haven't found is what? Side C. So let's form this partnership with side C over here, okay? Side C, little c over sine of angle C, so in this case it's going to be 60.8, but over here it's going to be 8.6 equals, and so we're using law of sines again, you could either use the A values or the B values, it doesn't really matter. I would probably choose the A values just because those were given to me and I know those are wrong. So the A, side A was uh, 22.8 over sine 55.3. And so likewise over here, 22.8 over sine 55.3. Notice in my law of sines this time, I put the, the side on top. Usually whatever I'm solving for, I'm going to put on the top left. So, you know, cross multiply or multiply up or multiply both sides by sine 60.8, whatever you're going to do, or whatever you want to call it. We've got 22.8 times sine 60.8 divided by sine 55.3, 24.2, and 24.2 feet. C is going to equal 20, 24.2 feet. Or over here, do the same thing. You would have 22.8 times sine 8.6 divided by sine 55.3 is about 4.1. You do 4.15 if you're doing sig figs, but. Uh, We've got C equals 4.1. Okay, so we have found two different things. I think maybe since we've got two different triangles, maybe it'd be good to just re-summarize. You, you've got two triangles that are possible. So on one hand, we found little c was 24.2 feet. Angle B was 63.9 degrees. Angle C was 60.8 degrees. On the other hand, the other triangle, little C was 4.1 feet. Angle B was 116.1 degrees. Angle C was 8.6 degrees. Example six, solving another triangle. First thing I'm going to do is uh, is try to draw it. The 
It says angle A is 43.5 degrees. Side A is 10.7, and side C is 7.3 inches. So again, if you think about if you think about that temple run, that guy running around, I see an angle and a side and a side, angle side side. That indicates that this is case two. It's the law of sines, but it's case two. It's the ambiguous case. And so once you know it's case two or ambiguous case, you would know that well, it might be uh, zero, one, or two triangles pop out here. Okay. Um, so when I examine what I've got. These two numbers go together, and 7.2 is going to go with angle C. I'm going to start with angle C. Let's find angle C first. So use that law of sines. Remember, put your variable on the top and flip the equation upside down if you have to. Sine C over 7.2 equals sine of angle A, 43.5, over 10.7. So we're going to multiply 7.2 times this. Seven point two times sine forty three point five divided by ten point seven. Point four six three two. Sine C equal point four six three two. To isolate, we're going to do an inverse sine of that number. And I get 27.6. Okay? So far, so good. 27.6 degree reference where sine is positive. Leads me to two different angles, two different answers to that equation. The first one is just 27.6. C equals 27.6 degrees. Or we look at the second one, 180 minus 152.4. C equals 152.4 degrees. That equation, that red equation up above, has two different answers 27.6 or 152.4. Now, hopefully, you, you get suspicious because this second one is so big. 152 is a pretty big angle to put inside a triangle, okay? And so, you know, maybe what you look at is this 152.4 is one of the angles to go along with 43.5. Maybe you notice something about that? That's more than 180 right there, right? 150 plus 40 is 190. That can't possibly work. You might be able to tell right now that that can't possibly work. That second one isn't going to form a triangle. Even though that is an answer to my red equation above, that's not going to form a triangle. And so we can already kind of tell. But if, let's say you can't tell. If you can't tell, we would go on with the problem solving, and we would find angle B. So angle B is going to be 180 minus angle A with 43.5 and minus angle C was 27.6. So angle B equals 108.9 degrees. All right, so far so good. We would need to do that to the other side, the other triangle, and let's see what happens with the other one. B equals 180 minus 43.5 minus 152.4. What's going to happen? Yeah, you're going to get a negative number. Negative 15.9. That can't possibly make a triangle. So I'm not even going to look at that. That can't possibly form a triangle, so ignore it. It's not going to work. There's only going to be one triangle. Remember, the ambiguous case tells me there's either zero, one, or two triangles. This one's going to be one triangle. So let's just finish, let's just finish the problem. We've got angle C, we've got angle B. 
The only thing missing now is this side B. So let's find this side B. Side B over sine 108.9 degrees equals, and you can either use the A's or the C's, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use the A's because those were given to me and I know those numbers are right. 10.7 over sine 43.5 degrees. To solve, I'm going to multiply that right there. I'm going to have 10.7 times sine 108.9 divided by sine 43.5. 14.7. B equals 14.7, and we are in inches. So I think the best thing that you can do is, is at the end kind of summarize your answer. One triangle exists, and we found angle C was 27.6 degrees, angle B was 108.9 degrees, and side B is 14.7 inches. Example 8, we're going to find the area of triangle ABC, and you should notice in this triangle down here we've got side and side. Okay, and that's that's where these formulas are going to come from. Now again, don't don't get bogged down in the letters. Just understand that your formula is going to be two sides and the angle in between. That's SAS right there. So the formula is going to say one half times one of the sides times the other side times sine of the angle in between. Now that's going to be 55 points. Let's look at this. 10, you've got 10 uh, minutes means 10 over 60. So that's 55 point 16 repeating degrees. Let's just type that in. One half times 34 times 42 times sine 55.16. Get about 586. This is area, so don't uh, don't mess up the units there. 586 square feet. 